Santiago de Compostela is the final destination of one of the most important pilgrimage routes in the Christian world, the Way of St. James. The Camino de Santiago is present in every corner of the city, but believe us, there is much more to Santiago beyond the Camino, and in this video you will get to know several incredible places in the city, as well as get in touch with the superlative local gastronomy. Come and discover Santiago de Compostela with us. We are heading today to a wonderful city in the north of Spain. Although Santiago de Compostela and the Way of St. James are indivisible concepts, in today's video we won't talk about the Way of St. James so much as its final destination, the city of Santiago. We'll see where it is and how to get to Santiago, we'll talk about the places you shouldn't miss, and we'll take a basic tour of the local gastronomy, one of the most extraordinary in Spain. We'll finish by sharing some tips on when to visit Santiago, how many days to spend in the city, and where to stay. Hola, ¿qué tal? Hello, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. Ready for another trip in our company? We're leaving right now. Santiago de Compostela is the capital of the region of Galicia and is located in the far northwest corner of Spain, just above Portugal. It is a long way from the usual cities visited by tourists in Spain and it takes some degree of effort to get there. Returning to the general map of the Iberian Peninsula, if you want to get to Santiago from Madrid, the two best options are the train, operated by Renfe, or the plane. From other cities farther afield, the best option is the plane, with routes from large Spanish cities such as Barcelona, Valencia, or Seville. 12 kilometers from the center of Santiago is the airport of Santiago Rosalia de Castro, IATA code SCQ, a modern and beautiful airport. Options for departing from the airport are by rental car, taxis, or the local bus line 6A, which takes you to the center of Santiago. You will find the taxis and buses as you exit the revolving door to the outside of the airport. Taxis cost approximately 25 euros, and the bus ticket is purchased by paying cash to the driver. At the time of filming the video, the fare is 1 euro to the center of Santiago. The journey time is approximately half an hour. As it is not an airport, only service, it makes numerous stops along the way. On the way back to the airport, be careful as it is not uncommon to see the crowded bus passing through the stops without opening the doors. The bus runs every 20 minutes and the impression we had is that it is not a service properly sized to serve Santiago residents and passengers traveling to the airport, being deficient for both. Let's talk about the must-see places in Santiago. As we mentioned at the beginning, Santiago and the Way of St. James, the Way of St. James and Santiago, are literally inseparable. Wherever you go in Santiago, you will breathe the atmosphere of the Camino. Very special because the city is the end point of the pilgrimage and you can feel the joy and happiness of those who arrive in the city, which is proportional to the number of days spent on the Camino. The most special place in Santiago is the Plaza del Obradoiro, witness to the arrival of the pilgrims at the end of the pilgrimage. The square has six important points of interest. 
The most important of them all is the Cathedral of Santiago. Next to the cathedral is the Palacio de Gelmires, the Hostal de los Reyes Católicos, today a Parador Nacional, a national hotel, the Palacio de Rajoy, seat of the Santiago City Council, the Palacio de San Jerome, seat of the Rectorate of the University of Santiago, and finally the square itself, a space as important and lively as the buildings that surround it. Majestic by day and by night, the Cathedral of Santiago is the most important monument in the city. The cathedral is also the most important temple of Romanesque art in Spain, as it is usual in a work that has been built over the centuries, it also incorporates other artistic styles. Let's take a quick look at the location of the most important parts of the cathedral so that you can find your way around easily. On the side facing the square is the Obradoiro facade, and to its left the Palace of Gelmires. To the right of the facade, a small entrance gives access to the museum and the cloister of the cathedral. On the south side, next to the Plaza de las Praterías, is the Praterías facade, where you will enter if you are going to see the interior of the cathedral or attend mass. To the right of the facade stands the Berenguela, the nickname of the cathedral's clock tower. On the facade facing Plaza de Quintana, there is a door leading out of the cathedral through the shop and one of the most important entrance doors, the Puerta Santa, which only opens on holy years. Finally, on the facade facing Plaza de la Inmaculada is the Azabacheria facade, with a door that today is used as an exit from the cathedral. The facade of the Obradoiro, which faces the square, is baroque and is crowned by a statue of St. James at the top. The towers of the facade were completed in the 18th century. Inside the facade, not visible from the square is the Portico de la Gloria, which we will discuss later. To the left of the facade, attached to the cathedral, stands the Palace of Helmirez, the Archbishop's Palace, an important work of civil Romanesque architecture. To visit the Portico de la Gloria, you enter through the Palace of Helmirez, which can be visited as part of the Cathedral Museum. A door to the right of the main facade leads to the Cathedral Museum, which we will talk about when we finish seeing the exterior of the cathedral. In the Plaza de las Praterías, you will find the entrance point to the cathedral for those who want to attend Mass and see the interior of the temple. It is the only Romanesque facade of the cathedral with a complete set of images that have been added over time. To the right of the door is the beautiful clock tower known as Berenguela. In the Plaza de Quintana is the Puerta Santa, the holy door, which only opens its doors when it is a holy year, and this happens when 25th July, the Feast of St. James, falls on a Sunday. Whoever enters the cathedral through this door receives the Jubilee. If you see the cathedral from the outside, you will surely also want to see it from the inside. There are two complementary ways of doing this. The first is the free visit. You will join the queue in the Plaza de la Plateria and go inside to visit the temple. Depending on the date, you may find long queues or even endless queues. It is important to be patient. The cathedral is opened from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Pilgrim's Mass is celebrated several times a day, and during these Masses, tourists are not allowed to visit the cathedral, only to attend Mass. On many dates throughout the year, there may be Masses at other times. It is worth checking the calendar on the cathedral's website. Currently, the the Camino de Santiago is having an incredible success, and it is not uncommon for the church to reach its maximum capacity when no more pilgrims are allowed in to attend Mass. So if you want to attend Mass, arrive on time to avoid being left out. During non-Mass times, you are free to wander around the huge church.
In a small chapel under the main altar, there is a small mausoleum where, according to legend, the relics of St. James the Apostle are kept. One of the most famous elements of the cathedral is its botafumeiro, a huge incense burner used since the Middle Ages as an instrument of purification of the cathedral. Watching the botafumeiro work is an exciting and unforgettable spectacle. Eight men are in charge of operating the sensor, which, thanks to a mechanism with pulleys and taking advantage of the law of the pendulum, travels along the transept of the cathedral at a maximum speed of 68 kilometers per hour. The big question you may be asking yourself is when does the Botafumeiro work? You can see it in action on certain important dates throughout the year, such as Pentecost, which is when we recorded the images you are seeing, and also on all those occasions when a private individual pays for the Botafumeiro to work. The first calendar of operation can be consulted in a link that we will leave in the description of the video, but it is impossible to tell when a pilgrim will fork out the money to put the Botafumeiro in motion. One last piece of advice if you want to contemplate the flight of the Botafumeiro in all its splendor, do not sit in the main nave of the church but on the benches in the transept, the nave that crosses the main nave perpendicularly. In addition to the free visit to the cathedral, you can buy a ticket to visit the cathedral museum, the cloister, some of the balconies overlooking Plaza de Obradoiro, and the extraordinary and magnificent Portico de la Gloria. As photography and video recording is not allowed inside the museum or the Portico de la Gloria, we show you images taken in the spaces where there is no such restriction. The Portico de la Gloria is probably the most important work of Romanesque sculpture in the world, an impressive architectural ensemble. The entrance ticket includes an audio guide that you can access with your smartphone and that will enhance your visit even more. Don't hesitate for a moment, it's an absolutely unmissable place. To visit the Portico de la Gloria, you will enter through the door on the left of the Obradoiro facade. To visit the museum, the cloister and the balconies, go through the door on the right. Opposite the cathedral is the Palacio de Rajoy, a neoclassical building that is currently the headquarters of the Santiago City Council and the department of the presidency of the Junta de Galicia, the regional government. On the north side of the square is the Hostal de los Reyes Católicos, which was a hospital built in the Gothic and Renaissance styles and is now a Parador Nacional, a hotel in the Spanish public network of charming accommodation and one of the most luxurious options for those looking for accommodation in Santiago. At the opposite end of the city from the Parador is the Colegio de San Jerome, a Gothic building that today houses the Rectorate of the University of Santiago. And despite having so many illustrious neighbors, we believe that the soul of the Plaza del Obradoiro is really in its center, with pilgrims arriving here and being enraptured by the completion of the route. You could dedicate a whole day to the Plaza del Obradoiro and the cathedral, but there are several other places of interest in Santiago that we want to show you. Very close to the Plaza del Obradoiro is the Colegio o Palacio o Pazo de Fonseca, a Renaissance palace that was the original seat of the University of Santiago. The beautiful interior courtyard is free to visit and the palace now houses the university's main library as well as other services. It is easy to understand that the magnificence of Santiago's cathedral overshadows other nearby churches, but if you're interested, two temples worth visiting nearby are San Martino Pinario and San Francisco. The monastery and church of San Martino Pinario is a large Benedictine monastery founded in the 10th century and the convent and church of San Francisco was founded by St. Francis of Assisi. Part of the monument is now occupied by a hotel. We will see more churches in the course of the video, but now it is time to take a stroll through the streets of the historic center of Santiago. You will walk up and down the trio of Franco, Villar and Nova streets countless times. Look at the buildings, the arcades, every detail. You can also enjoy the beautiful little squares scattered around the center of Santiago. Among 
the many museums in Santiago, we would like to highlight one, the Museo do Povo Galego, the Museum of the Galician People, located in the former convent of Santo Domingo de Bonaval. It is an anthropological museum that presents numerous materials related to Galician culture. It is a pity that the descriptions accompanying the materials on display in the museum are only in Galician. The other must-see of the museum is architectural, the extraordinary triple helicoidal staircase, built between the 17th and 18th centuries and made up of three independent spirals that give access to different floors. And yes, if you thought of DNA when you saw the pictures, so did we. An absolutely stunning place and a real architectural freak out. By the way, if you go to the Museo do Povo Galego, the day is beautiful and you feel like walking, here's our suggestion. First visit Bonaval Park, then Belvis Park, and finish the tour at the College Church of Santa Maria de Sar. Bonaval Park occupies land that belonged to the neighboring convent and has been restored as an urban park following a project by the Galician architect Isabel Aguirre and the Portuguese Álvaro Sisa. The park is built on a hillside overlooking the city and is divided into three parts, the orchard, the wooded area and the cemetery. The Belvis Park stretches along a small river at the foot of the Belvis Convent. And finally, the College Church of Santa Maria de Sar is a beautiful example of Romanesque architecture in Santiago. Due to the collapse of the temple in the 17th and 18th centuries, flying buttresses were added to support the exterior walls of the church, giving it a quite unique appearance. The third park in Santiago that you should visit, and probably the best known as it is next to the historic center, is the Alameda Park. It is the city's main urban garden and a place that everyone chooses to go for a pleasant stroll. It also offers beautiful views of the historic center and the cathedral, especially from a viewpoint guarded by an impressive centenary eucalyptus tree. We return to the city center to visit an essential place in Santiago that serves as a bridge to the next topic we will talk about in the video, gastronomy. We are at the Mercado de Abastos, Santiago's central market, which was built in 1941 on the site of the old city market. It is one of the most visited places in the city and the most interesting thing is that among these visitors there are locals and tourists alike in a coexistence and balance that other markets in other Spanish cities have not managed to maintain. Please note that the market is closed on Sundays. At the market you can discover the wonderful products of the Galician land, including meats, incredible cheese and wonderful fish and seafood. And speaking of seafood, the market offers a first opportunity to get in touch with the seafood for which Galicia is so famous, and to do so in a fun way. You can eat in any of the market's restaurants, or you can buy the products you fancy the most from the fishmongers and take them to a restaurant like the Marisqueria, where they will prepare them for you, charging a small fee. We opted for an even more economical approach. We bought the products at a fish stall, which has a small kitchen where they prepare the food for us. We bought a bottle of wine at a different stall and a sample of Galician cheese from another. And the feast was ready. If you are a carnivore, you must try Galician veal, which you will see on display in many restaurants and markets. On our recent visit to Santiago, we didn't have time for meat, but there you go. Along with the meat, the most prominent items in the shop windows are seafood, foods for which Galicia is known worldwide. But before we look at seafood, let's look at two delicious Galician foods. The first is the Galician empanada, made of wheat flour filled with products such as meat, vegetables, fish or crustaceans. We love in particular the tuna empanada, empanada de atún. Another classic product of the region is the caldo galego Galician broth. This is a soup made with vegetables, beans and potatoes, which can include meat. The broth must be accompanied by several pieces of delicious Galician bread, a very characteristic bread with denomination of origin. Good bread is a serious thing in Santiago. 
Another very typical product are the pimientos de padrón, padrón peppers, also known as pimientos de herbón. These are small green peppers that are usually grilled with a twist. Most of the peppers are very mild, but a very small number can turn out to be incredibly spicy, so if you cannot tolerate spiciness, take a small bite of the peppers first. Although increasingly fewer and fewer peppers are turning out to be hot, when they do, they are not for the faint heart. It is impossible to describe how good the cheese from Galicia is. And we always find a place in our suitcase to take some home with us. At the Mercado de Abastos you can try the ones you like best. And before heading to the sea, two very typical desserts. The first, which you will see everywhere, is the unmistakable Tarta de Santiago, made with lots of almonds, sugar, egg and orange, and decorated with a cross of St. James. If you want to try the authentic Tarta de Santiago, look for the protected designation of origin seal, which is the only warranty that the cake is not made with flour. The second dessert are filloas, very similar to French crepes, with the difference that the filloas butter incorporates anise seed. They can come with many fillings, we love filloas with a Galician cheese filling. The ice creams from Bico de Shadow, which has a shop in the center of Santiago are excellent. And now we enter seafood territory with a recommendation, the picturesque Bodegón Casas Chico in the center of Santiago, which occupies the space of an old hardware store. There we ate one of the best pulpo afeira of our lives. It is a very famous Galician recipe that can be found all over Spain. It is made with cooked octopus, sliced and seasoned with paprika and olive oil and served on a wooden plate. It is eaten with chopsticks. It was so good, but so good that there was nothing left. And we finish with the ultimate seafood feast, the mariscata. It is offered in countless restaurants in the city and we recommend you to get an idea of what you are paying before making your choice. It is logical that the level of demand of a Galician when ordering seafood is not going to be the same as that of a visitor. We, for example, are not experts in seafood and so we chose a restaurant that we were told would fall into the category of low-cost, decent seafood. We're not experts and did not want to spend too much, but we will mention a couple of other restaurants later for those with a more generous budget who want a high standard of seafood. A mariscada, for those unfamiliar, is a large platter served with a varied selection of seafood. There are many ingredients and the price will depend on what it is included. In ours, which you can see in the picture, we did not include bogavante, a lobster-like animal with two large claws, which tends to increase the value of the mariscada and it only included two scallops which makes the price more affordable. Don't be embarrassed if you look at the tray with a how do you eat that? A mariscada is a culinary adventure. Don't pay too much attention to the strange appearance of some animals either. The uglier they are, the more delicious they tend to be, which is especially true of Percebes barnacles. If you don't know how to eat them, ask the waiter for help. You will need tweezers to open the legs of several animals and eat their tasty meat. Two restaurant recommendations given to us by people we trust in Santiago for a mariscada of a higher level of ingredients and price are the restaurants San Clemente and Carretas, both quite close to the cathedral. So what do you think of the tour of Santiago? If you are wondering what would be the best time of the year to visit Santiago, we'd say spring especially and autumn, due mainly to the milder weather. The weather is even better in summer, but the massive, massive presence of tourists makes the summer months of the year unadvisable. How much time should you spend in Santiago? Spend at least a full day and a night in the city. But if you like to take it easy, two nights will give you time to enjoy the city even more. Where to stay in Santiago? Any address within the historic city center will suit your needs perfectly. The Plaza de Galicia area isn't bad either. If you plan to arrive or leave the airport by bus, you can see on the map now the route that Line 6A takes from Santiago to the airport. The luxury accommodation in Santiago is the Parador Nacional, which we mentioned earlier in the video. But if you want a charming hotel for half the price, check out the San Francisco Hotel Monumento, very close to the Plaza de Obradoiro. 
and that's the end of our video dedicated to the magnificent Santiago de Compostela. As always, if you have any questions about Santiago, please use the commentary box to ask. Now you will see on the screen another video that we believe will help you a lot to make your next trip to Spain a success. We are waiting for you in that video.